for this next segment, I'm going to animate an arm. And to do that, I need a drawing layer. Now for this, I will need three drawing layers. Each drawing layer will be for a part of the arm. I will have my hand, my lower arm, and my upper arm. Now I created those layers in that sequence so that the hand is below the lower arm and the lower arm is below the upper arm because we are going to create a parent-child relationship between them after we have constructed the artwork. So for making the artwork, I am going to create an upper arm shape. And for expedient purposes, I am going to close the artwork at the elbow. But it's possible that we can create artwork that is open so we have something that appears to be more continuous between sections of our body as we work on them. We're not going to be too concerned about joints and how we're handling the connecting joints. And we're also not going to be obsessing about complex detail either. So I have three layers. Each one represents a different part of my character's body. I drew them using light tables, so it highlights which is the current active layer. I do find that useful when creating artwork so that as I'm working, I know that I'm on the correct layer for my project because I don't want to add the hand to the upper arm layer by accident. So if I'm not diligent about which layer I'm drawing on, that can be a problem. Because I started this in an old file that was already open, I was on the wrong frame, so it actually created the artwork at frame 60. I just moved it back to frame 1, so now we're ready to start working with this. After my artwork is created, I need to establish the parent-child relationship between these different layers, and then I will have to set the rotation point for each of these, but I like to create the parent-child relationship first. And to do that, what I do is I take my layer and I drag it onto my lower layer, I drag onto the upper layer, and we can see how it changed that relationship. It shows that the lower layer is now a child of the upper layer. It indented it in relation to it. Now I will do the same thing where I'll drag the hand onto the lower layer. Now we can see if I drag just straight up, that little bar is going to tell me whether it will be a sibling or a child. Siblings are at the same, so the hand could become a sibling for it, or I can drag the hand onto lower, so it creates this hierarchy. The upper arm will be in charge of the lower arm and hand. The lower arm will be in charge of the hand. That my layers have been established, I am going to set their transformation points. This is referred to in Harmony as the pivot point. So if you do a search for how do I change this so that it rotates at the correct part. So if I go to the upper arm and want to change it, I set the pivot point with the rotation tool. Remember we access that by selecting advanced animation and that adds that to our toolbar. Harmony is really good about if I wanted to add it up here, I could add it up here. If I want to put it down here where I'm out of space, I could do it down here. 
So every one of my little windows or palettes, I can add all these different toolbars to. So advanced animation, I choose the rotation tool and now I move that pivot point to the shoulder. Now, if that arm were to rotate, we can see it takes the hand and the lower arm with it. Verify that before you start adding in your other pivot points. Now, if I go to the lower arm, I move and set the elbow, and I can test that pivot point. That works. And now I'm going to go to the hand, and I will set its pivot point as well if I grab the tool correctly. If you click anywhere but on the center dot, it will just rotate it. But if I go to that center dot, I can now drag that around and now the hand will rotate that point. So I've now set my pivot points for each one of my layers and I'm ready to start animating. So the first thing I'm going to do is add frames to this layer, F5. So I hit the function key F5 and now I am going to go to the very first frame and hit F6 which manually inserts a keyframe. I like to set that very first keyframe so it's now locked and it knows that that is the position, rotation, scale, and everything for the artwork at that opening part. Now if I want this arm to move, I am going to in this just use the rotation tool because all I'm going to be doing is rotating anyway. I don't want to rotate that one up yet. Um, so with the upper arm I am going to rotate that back a little bit and then I'm going to move the forearm and put a little bit of bend in. So I'm putting a little bit of bend in the elbow before we start moving the hand up. So we can see how it's moving. Now this is a time where using the keyboard controls of H and J allow me to cycle through my layers very quickly. So now I can go to the hand right there and now moving further out in time I can use comma and period to advance frames. So we can see how the arm goes has bent back a little bit. And now I will hit J to move to the forearm. And notice how the color is changing on it, indicating which item is my current active layer. So we can see <coughs> So I'm starting to add a little bit of fluidity to the animation by moving it out. And then I drag the playback head back and forth to study the motion to see if that's what I want to have happening. Now in this case I'm going to move it up much more dramatically at that point. and then I'm going to put a little bit more bend in on the arm and I'm going to pull the hand down a little bit because the hand is now starting to lagging and then the hand will move beyond So we we're able to very quickly and easily start to create motion and life within our animation. One of the things to notice is currently I have, unlike when we were doing our frame by frame drawing where we had a number of drawings for a given layer, here I just have one piece of artwork. But if I want to now change and switch this hand to something else. At that point, I'm going to, the hand layer is active. If I look under my library tab, I'll see that there is one frame of artwork 
for that layer. A cool thing that we can do in Harmony is I can go and say I want to create an empty drawing. And now if I notice here, there's two frames. And I'm going to turn on onion skinning so I can see what the previous hand occupied. And now, with the paintbrush, I'm going to create a hand shape. So now we can see how the hand morphed. I'm taking advantage of both frame by frame and keyframed or tweened animation. So now if I decide I want yet another drawing, I can add to it. Now I will go out grab my fill just to make it consistent. Go back a few frames. So with this we can see how it opens up getting the same richness of frame by frame but what's also nice to see is at this point right here on this frame we can switch and now I can switch it back back and each time I do that change Probably don't want. Do want to go down? If I go to the all the way down, we end up at no artwork. Whoops! So look, see it went away, but I can just as easily bring it back. So now I have my hand. And if I hit play and watch it in real time, you can see how we're able to create that smoother animation because we're only trying to do straight ahead or frame by frame drawing for a smaller element like a hand, or an eye, or a mouth. Or if I wanted, I could even, as the arm bends, we could recognize that the arm bends because the bicep muscle contracts, so then I would get a bulging bicep. So realistically, as we're doing the bend right here, I could take and have a new drawing for the upper arm. So for the upper arm, I could duplicate the drawing so it creates a copy. We can see now how we have two, but now this copy I can either redraw or so I can stretch it out or I can stretch the points out if I don't want to change anything except the bicep part. So the bicep bent and now at this point I'm going to go back to the original arm because it's not stretching anymore. Now hit play. Okay, I probably need an in-between because that bicep jumped a little bit too fast. And that's completely possible. So if I need now an in-between, all I have to do is say duplicate that drawing. If I click on the duplicate, we can see where we now have another one there. I'll turn on the onion skinning, and I'll just oh, stretch that out so it, we can see it. And with the white arrow, I can just pull it out just a little bit instead of quite as much. And that gives kind of a two-step pumping of the arm. So with your animation, 
we can combine frame by frame and keyframe or tween the animation to take advantage of the best of both worlds. <coughs>